Something was switched on the thing. I just saw it. Let me see if it's good now. That was because of my braces first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so serious. That was because of my braces. <laughs> oh, keep it is so <laughs> like my, my lip got like stuck on my braces. All right, hold on. I'm checking. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe my ears for a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me check. All right, yeah, we good. We good. I appreciate, uh, the, appreciate the heads up for the YouTube chat. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> just had to toggle something real quick. But anyways, back to the market. Back to regularly scheduled content. Um, <clears throat> the market's down a little bit on the day. We had a little bit of a gap down. Now we're kind of rallying for today. So this is a daily chart that we're looking at. And it looks like SPY has, SPY is really, um, hasn't broken trend at all. SPY is kind of still headed to the upside. But if we zoom into the daily chart, to the intraday chart on the five minute candles, um, you can see we had a little bit of a gap down. Um, and then we sold off a little bit in the morning and then we kind of just been rallying from here, um, and kind of consolidating in this range. So. We'll see if we get anything different. Other than that, VIX is still kind of sitting pretty low, even though it's up a little bit today, sitting a little bit above 13, but really nothing too too exciting yet. And like VIX, I, I just feel again, VIX probably is not going to expand or have any type of significant expansion until there's a little bit of a scare in the overall market. Like whenever we actually do break this trend and have some type of significant down days or anything that's meaningful to the downside, or just a or just a change of course. Like right now, you can see every time we've had any type of red days, um, it hasn't sustained. Like it's been a red day or two, and then we kind of rallied, made new highs. We'll consolidate for a few days, rally, make new highs, rally, make new highs. So we're still we're still on that uptrend to where we can make another new high this week. We can make another another new high next week. Um, so whenever that stops playing out, then maybe we'll get some type of meaningful expansion on volatility. But until then. We have a few positions. We have CLSK and NVDA, QQQ, Tesla. Tesla, this is going to be one that's going to be for a video, most likely, mm. that is in the works. Um, and it has to do with Tom. And I don't know if you saw the clip, but it was Tom and um, Tom and Victor arguing, going back and forth, pretty mm. much talking about like when is the right time to sell puts on um, on Tesla. So I think that's going to be. Um, uh, Victor just messaged me. Speak of the devil. Um, but I think that's going to, you know, that's going to be a fun video to talk about, but seeing, seeing Tom and Victor bantering back and forth is actually one of the funniest things because like Victor, Victor be questioning Tom. And I don't think Tom's used to people just like throwing shots back or like questioning his thought process or judgment. And it's funny to see both of them, um, be so it's, it's, it's cool to see two people that are super well articulated mm. super well can articulate themselves super well in a certain industry that are super educated. It's fun to see them go back and forth when they have a personality. Like yeah. Tom and Victor have a person that like I see people like that on like CNBC, Yahoo, whatever it is. Like there's always people up there that can articulate things and go back and forth really well. But the thing that I think they lack is like that genuine personality. And I agree. That's the difference with Tom and Victor and those guys. Like when you see their personality come through on that, it makes it just more enjoyable because it's funny to see. But in a in a bit of uh, breaking news, I don't know if you have heard about the um. The Boeing CEO, I think he made a little statement about him resigning um, towards the end of this year. Um, mm -hmm. So I wanted to share a little clip real quick. Yeah, pull it up. Um, let me share. So you're actually going to have to, you, for some reason, like I don't have the, the normal, like, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so there's, I'll share this real quick and we can talk about it after. News Daily, thank you so much for joining us this Monday. We start right now with a major shakeup at Boeing. Three senior executives, including its CEO, Dave Calhoun, they're stepping down. Calhoun addressed his decision this morning on CNBC. Why now? Uh, I've entered my fifth year. At the end of this year, I'll be close to 68 years old. Um, I've always said to the board, and the board has been very prepared, I would give them plenty of notice so that they could understand and plan succession in, in regular order. And that's what this is about. It's me giving them notice that at the end of this year, I plan to retire. 
This announcement comes as airlines and regulators, they've been calling for change after multiple reports of quality and manufacturing flaws on Boeing planes. That includes this incident here on your screen that happened in January when a door panel blew out midair during an Alaskan air flight. Right now, the DOJ is investigating that particular incident. NBC News senior correspondent Tom Costello joins us now with more. Tom, this is pretty big news for the plane manufacturer. I mean, first, just walk us through what this means yeah. for the company and, and who else is leaving. First of all, let's put this into perspective. This is one of the most important companies in the entire American economy. Boeing is part of the backbone of the economy, but it has struggled following that door plug incident that you mentioned. But also, you may recall this particular CEO, Dave Calhoun, took over after the MAX 8 crashes overseas, overseas rather, killed nearly 350 people. So this is now, it appears, the board taking action and cleaning house. Here's who's leaving, not just the CEO leaving by the end of the year, but also the board chair, Larry Kellner, not seeking re-election. The commercial aircraft chief is retiring, and Ed Clark, the head of 737 production, he just left yeah. last month. This company is in a major transition role right, right now because of all of these ongoing problems that they have been facing for years now. Uh, keep in mind, Calhoun again came after the MAX 8 crashes and that controversy and that crisis for the company. And now he's gonna be leaving following the MAX 9 serious incident with airline CEOs. And this is remarkable, airline CEOs wanting to meet with Boeing's board, but without the CEO present. That speaks to how much his credibility has been undermined by these incidents. I'm really appreciative of the context you said at the beginning about how big of a decision this is for our economy. Have you heard though, Tom, who will replace Calhoun as CEO? Well, there are there's at least one internal candidate and they will probably also consider looking outside the company. Listen, it is uh, an open secret and it is has been discussed for years now that Boeing's problems now date back decades, that there is a decades long problem there within the company that have created these issues. It's quality control, commitment to safety, losing some of the engineering prowess it was, it was known for. So the question is, do you need somebody from outside to come in with new blood, or do you need somebody on the inside who truly understands the culture but still has that engineering mm -hmm. prowess and expertise. It is going to be a very, very challenging job for any, anybody to fill. Yeah, challenging in a crucial time with all those multiple yeah. investigations happening at the same time. NBC News senior correspondent Tom Costello joining us live from D.C. Tom, thank you. Yeah. It um, takes a... Boeing always in something, bro. Bro, so <laughs> that kind of blows my mind, though, like the... Um, I've never seen... It's First of all, it's funny that the CEO is kind of using... Um, the whole Boeing situation, or him getting old as the excuse for him retiring, but everyone knows um, it's because there's it's a dumpster fire right now. Like no one wants to to be a part of it. I've never seen such like four such big members just leave the company all at the same time. Yeah. Um, it's like a crisis. Usually they'll try to like build it back up after a little while and like keep the company steady, but it seems like they're all just running from the problem, which is. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so, it's crazy. Like they're all just ready for the problem. That's funny. So, uh, no, Boeing has a pretty high IV rank right now. It's up a little bit on the day after a pretty mm. massive sell off the past couple months. But um, I'm just trying to see what you could get for these contracts if we were to sell something. Right? I don't care about nothing about the news. I'm trying to see. What <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool story, bro. Yeah, um, the story is I right. Know, I wonder what all the other airlines are kind of up to, too. Let's see. Yeah, these are getting beat. Um, good airlines, good lord, good lord, man. This thing is at four dollars. There's no way they're going bankrupt. So Spirit uh uses Boeing planes, right? Like quite often. Yeah, I'm pretty sure all the airlines use Boeing, if I'm not mistaken. I, I haven't looked into it, but I would assume. I think United doesn't. Oh, okay. I'm mistaken, I could be wrong though. But, um, bro, it, it's so crazy because uh, this whole Boeing thing is it's such a big deal even like in the public eye right now that even like my friends that aren't usually tapped into the oh, for real? yeah, yeah they, they know about it because like i was speaking up one of my friends from the airport she mm -hmm. was like um she's like thankfully i didn't get one of those uh those bow planes or whatever they're called yeah. <laughs> like, I, was like, oh. I was like everybody knows huh um yeah so that's like a, a common fear. well there's so, earnings um april 25th for and that's around let's see yeah. save so american airlines april 24th for spirit airlines um, you, what was United? I wonder if I could just type United. 
to you and right, was you was it you 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 i forgot what or was it ua oh no ua is under armor <laughs> i forgot about under armor <laughs> i forgot about you under armor too universal security instruments i forgot what united airlines was was it AU? there's no way no was it ua i could have swore or was it ua or was it ual oh there we go ual yeah april 16th so in the next in like the next what's today today's the 25th in like the next two to three weeks mm -hmm. next two next two to four weeks there's a lot of earnings coming out for airlines so based off of all of this boeing news this is going to be interesting to see how those ones react but yeah um curious about this real quick just thought of biotech for a second just checking out xbi mm -hmm. but um anyways 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 i also have another clip that i want to get into real quick so let me let me pull it up so because <clears throat> today's title was talking about interest rates um in the future outlook so one thing i wanted to pull up was just get a brief get a brief you know explanation on what interest rates are what they affect why they're why they why they move mm -hmm. and um pretty much just talking about how does raising interest rates control inflation so we're going to take a quick look at this and then it's we'll discuss a little bit but let me pull this up sure. let me pull this up um was it uh, window on when i when i played the video was it like really clear like did it sound really clear yeah yeah it sounded good um do you want to send me the link of whatever you're gonna play and let me play it through i think oh, it might yeah. sound a little bit more clear. yeah you're right. let me do that bet, bet. you can just put it in our little chat yeah. yeah i'm sure your computer has enough on its plate just, it a little bit, just a little bit You'll never guess the ad I just got. What's that? A tasty? <laughs> yeah. Hey. He is right. Trade. This is how AI. Oh, man. I optimizes my schedule. So I have a project coming up. So I start by listing the project and then say. When central banks raise interest rates, it's big news. Bankers judging that the only way they can try to pull down inflation is to carry on raising interest rates. Are we going to see rising rates? Rising interest rates that will make the cost of borrowing go up. It can send oh, no. ripples across the whole economy. It can sink Wait, consumer confidence, <laughs> result in fewer jobs and lower wages, and cause stock prices to fall. If they go too far, too fast, it can tip economies into recession. So why do central banks raise interest rates? Let's start with the basics. If you borrow money, you'll have to pay back a little extra to make it worthwhile for the lender. Well, I think we can make it this long. You have a good reputation. We know you're reliable. I'm glad you think so. This is the interest rate. So if you are taking out a loan, you want the interest rate to be as low as possible so you don't have to pay that much back. On the flip side, if you want to save money, then a high interest rate means you can earn more on your savings. See it as a reward for leaving money in your account. But the size of your reward depends on the circumstances. There's no single interest rate in the economy. You've got thousands of banks setting their own commercial rates. That's all influenced, though, by the interest rate that the central bank sets. A central bank is like a bank for banks. Just like you and your savings account, banks also earn interest when they leave money with a central bank. Commercial banks have these things called reserves. So that's a bit like their cash on hand. Commercial banks lend those excess reserves to each other at an interest rate, and they also can deposit their excess reserves at the central bank. And when they do that, they can earn an interest rate. Ordinary people can't access the interest rate on the excess reserves, but it still affects them. And that's the idea. When central banks raise interest rates, they're trying to control inflation, how fast prices rise for everyone. They were 129, now they're 139, and that's in the space of four weeks. 
central banks like the Fed or the Bank of England or the European Central Bank are all trying to hit an inflation target of 2%. Interest rates are a really powerful tool that they have to do that. If inflation is seen as too high, that's when banks raise interest rates. The change spreads through the financial system and slows down the rate of inflation. Here's how. A rise in interest rates from a central bank means that a commercial bank will earn more on their reserves. They might make more from keeping their money in a central bank than lending it out. So if they do lend it out, they'll raise their interest rates to make it worth their while. How that affects consumers depends on the economy. Take mortgages. In places like Finland or Australia, lots of people have mortgages with variable interest rates. If you've got a variable rate mortgage where the interest rate that you pay is linked to the central bank's interest rate, then higher interest rates mean that essentially immediately the higher rate will translate into less cash to spend on other things. Less spare cash means households will spend less. And less spending means businesses will be warier of raising prices. This should lower inflation. In other countries like America or Canada, a bigger share of mortgages are set at fixed rates. People with fixed rates are protected against the direct effects of an interest rate rise, but will still feel an indirect impact. Higher interest rates mean that mortgages will become more expensive. If that is affecting all new buyers, then house prices will begin to fall. And that will make everyone who owns a home feel poorer and therefore they might spend less. Lower spending will translate into lower inflation. And it's not just consumers who will tighten the purse strings. When interest rates rise, then businesses will find it more expensive to borrow and invest. That generally means less economic activity. It might mean fewer jobs are created. Fewer jobs and lower wages could mean less money for households and consumer confidence might suffer, which also means less spending. People are grappling with a decline in real wages, meaning their money buys less. When interest rates rise, that will tend to slow down spending, investment, and generally depress economic activity. Overall, that will make businesses more reluctant to raise their prices, uh, and that will tend to pull back inflation. It sounds straightforward, right? But the trick is judging how far to go. In 1981, the Federal Reserve, America's central bank, allowed interest rates to rise to a whopping 19%. The move curbed inflation, but it led to widespread economic pain. I regret to say that we're in the worst economic mess since the Great Depression. It is very difficult to get inflation under control without severely denting economic activity. In America, it's been over 70 years since they've managed to get inflation down from over 5% without causing a recession. A little inflation is okay. It keeps the economy moving at a sensible speed. But inflation staying high for too long is a problem. Higher prices means employees will need higher wages, pushing up costs for businesses. That could drive up prices further, potentially leading to an upward spiral of wages and prices. Retail inflation in India has surged to 7.8%. The combination of tepid economic activity and high inflation poses serious challenges for Indian economy going forward. Central bankers are really concerned about setting expectations of inflation. The idea is that if it can show that it is credible, that it will always act to get inflation back down to 2%, then maybe it won't have to you know, raise interest rates and then lower them in this kind of seesaw fashion. Raising interest rates can slow an economy right down. The trouble is, the brake pedal has a delay. It can take as long as two years to see the full results from interest rate changes. Central banks know this, so when they set interest rates, they're actually trying to read the road ahead. But predicting the future isn't easy. 
The problem is it's difficult for the central bank to work out whether the inflation will fall back on its own. And even when central banks do get it right, they might still cause a crash. It may be a blunt instrument, but raising interest rates is still central banks' main tool for taming inflation. Central bankers would say that yes, raising interest rates can be painful. Slowing down the economy is not fun, but it's worth it. It's worth it to get low and steady inflation so that in the long run, you don't have to think about it. Thank you for watching. To read more of our coverage on interest rates, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Was, huh. that, was a, that was a good video. I think it was very clear. Yeah. Um, it's one point they kind of mentioned in it was that they, um, the government, like, has those interest rates in basically, like, like when we have less, like, excess money, that uh, businesses will have to lower their prices. Um, I don't know if that's always true, though. We um, said it again. Sorry. No, um, it's basically they're saying like when you have excess money um, that um, businesses or when you have less excess money, businesses will have to lower their prices like to kind of meet the consumer like yeah. at a level they could actually pay for. But I feel like that's not always the case. Um, I think we see that issue a lot with things just being like overly expensive and our wages just not matching how, like how much inflation like is affecting us. So I find that slightly contradictory, but I don't know what's your take on it no yeah i mean i think that yeah <clears throat> well when businesses recognize that people don't have as when businesses recognize that they're not getting as much sales i think they will stop raising prices mm -hmm. i don't think that they all businesses don't bring them back down to where they were but i think they will do stop raising them because they're just not going to get any more demand yeah i i think though those um those type of businesses that sell products that are necessities I think they take advantage of them being necessities and kind of keep those not price gouge necessarily but keep those prices high to where you will drop your other like not as important needs to to pay like that a little more for right currently 100 mm -hmm. and then like for example but then even you know even other places like let's just use fast food for example like that's not technically a need like food is a need in general but like specific restaurant chains not yeah, it's still a need because it's food, but not necessarily as much as a need. But like, for example, the, uh, restaurant establishments, I don't think they'll lower their prices back down uh, yeah. when it comes to just other goods and services. No, not really. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that is how it works, though. You know, they raise interest rates when you raise interest rates. Um, you know, it, it creates uh, people have less disposable income and if people have less disposable income that force would make a decision between wants and needs so if it's more of a need it's more of buying this and that that is i don't need this to live then typically those are going to be the industries that get hit first and the hardest yeah. um but it does it does it does kind of make sense um, no it, but, it does um, yeah uh and it, yeah it makes sense because the 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 other outcome like if you don't like balance it is much worse and it could lead to like a whole meltdown so um, I kind of, I see what they're going for, but I don't know, it, it's, it sucks. Um, what do you think though, are some of the things that will come back down in price? Like what are like the kind of hallmarks? I mean, honestly, I have no clue. Like probably, um, like asset prices, like in terms of items mm -hmm. of like, I, I have no clue, but like asset prices, like cars, the value of cars will, should drop, start to drop a little bit value of homes should theoretically drop a little bit but then mm -hmm. again that's that situation's tough too because people have locked in such a low interest rates interest rates have rise so much so there's a conversation around yeah uh, well who's going to be selling like we need supply on the market who's going to be the one to sell and it's not going to be the people that have a really low interest rate because mm -hmm. who knows if interest rates will ever get that low again so people are now reluctant to even sell their home even for a profit because the next home they're gonna have to buy they're gonna have to take on a, a fat interest rate that they didn't have to previously so now they're even reluctant to sell. so where's supply going to come from and it's just like that's oh, we have a, a shortage in in um <clears throat> in um building homes. It's like, where is the supply going to come from? So I get that side of the argument, and then at the same time, it's like higher interest rates, um, and these kind of things will affect the market. And then it's like Jerome Powell already talked about how there was going to be a, need to be a reset in the housing market. So it's mm -hmm. kind of just, I don't know, I don't know where supply is going to come from. I don't know. I just know that, um. In terms of like items, what items do I think will go down? I don't know, but I am looking forward to seeing assets. And I know you, you know, maybe someone, you know, 
generally cars aren't considered assets it's considered a liability but in general like those type of things where people are taking out loans that have interest rates on them i do think those will drop in value for sure but who knows when that's like the main game like even with the stock market i feel like that's how it's kind of always been and everybody like even now where the market is currently sitting mm -hmm. like yes we don't need any type of correction but i think that in general people understand that a correction wouldn't be like so insane if it did happen yeah but the hard part is just about if when. it is likely to happen yeah when that's always the hardest part like even with crypto like crypto rallying again like that doesn't surprise many people but the timing has always been the thing whenever it comes down to any type of market timing a market yeah. is extremely difficult um even if you have you know even if even if your expectations play out mm -hmm. when is always a question it's not never really an if i guess I don't know. We'll see what we get though. It's always interesting. I know um Luis is talking about that's why you shorted Carvana, higher interest rates, lower demand for cars. Makes sense. I mean, that's another reason why a lot of people are reluctant to get cars in the last year, whatever mm -hmm. it is, because that monthly payment's just a lot higher than it would have been. Um Mario said, Do you guys think McDonald's will go lower or recover to 283? We can pull that up here in a second. Yeah. Uh, but my answer is I have no clue. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, um, do you did something happen for it to drop the way it did? I was looking at it a bit, and it had a pretty substantial, like, little. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there was news or anything. It doesn't look like there was earnings. Earnings is probably soon, April twenty third, so less than a month away from McDonald's. Yeah. But um, I know Chick Fil A. Uh, Chick Fil A is publicly traded, right? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, is it? I don't know either. I've never looked at Chick Fil A like the ticker, but yeah, um, I know they're they're doing something. I don't think it's even publicly traded. But um, like their grade of like the meat they're gonna use is like gonna be like probiotic or something like that. So it's something bad. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, you. yeah. I'm curious. Oh, if I no, yeah. I don't. I don't think they're publicly traded. But that's that is interesting. I wonder why they're making that switch. Um, but no, McDonald's isn't even looking very attractive for me to sell premium in at least. Like if we could sell the two seventy five, two seventies. Um, that's the 38 Delta, and you know we're only collecting a dollar twenty eight. Sixty five percent pop. Pop is decent, but too much risk because mm -hmm. they can't collect enough credit on it so i mean i don't know if you're looking at if you wanted to get inside mcdonald's mario but i don't know not super attractive to me the ivy rank is there uh, maybe you could even sell something neutral in here we could see what it gives let's just go 285 290 we could go yeah yeah not really not very fond of it i mean you could sell you could sell an iron condor click dollar 73 58 pop you're outside the expected move, but there's something to do, but not, I don't know, not the best in McDonald's. We'll see what happens. Let me pull up this IVR indicator to see how much. Something I was kind of wondering about is um, mm -hmm. we're talking about interest rates. Yeah. Well, I understand that you don't want to get locked into a bad interest rate, but you can always refinance, right? So why are some people i know you should be hesitant like i was saying but like why do some people refuse to get something um if they can always refinance here in a month or two if they need that item mm, well i'd say number one well like if i were to look in the market right now mm -hmm. not only would i have to lock in a very high interest rate Mm -hmm. which creates a, a very large monthly payment for something that shouldn't be that high. Yeah. But also the homes are extremely overvalued. So not only are you taking on a monthly payment that shouldn't be that high, I think another decision people think is the actual home itself is overpriced. Price in general. Itself. In general. So not only are you taking a larger monthly, monthly payment, mm -hmm. you're putting down a larger down payment, closing cost is probably going to be more. Mm -hmm. um, and then also you're just, you're taking out a loan for something that's overpriced. Yeah. And on top of that, you have a, a huge interest rate at the same time. So I think those are like two things to consider. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also one of those things to where it comes down to your personal situation. I'd argue for most, it's not very conducive, mm -hmm. but it is very situation by situation based what your financial goals are, what you intend to do with the property, the time horizon you intend to have the property. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot that goes into people's decision making when it comes down to that. But I'd say number one, the monthly payment. And then number two, the home is literally overvalued, especially when you see how much these homes increased over the past five years. The yeah. home is not that valuable, but it is just saying like, that's just what the market's at right now. Um, and then if if home prices were to come down, 
yeah, you're gonna, yeah, you can refinance lock in the smaller interest rate now, mm -hmm. but if they're cutting rates like that, that probably would also tell you that asset prices did come down a little bit and they're controlling inflation pretty well. So you're probably going to get a, a huge, you're going to take a loss on the property for what you paid initially anyway, what you paid initially. Yeah. You can refinance, but it's like, okay, yeah, I'm refinancing now and I'm saving X amount a month now, but I got to also keep in mind, I just lost 50,000 cause I bought it 50,000 over, over yeah. asking price. And so it's like a, a small plus. Yeah. In the L's you're taking. Well, yeah. And if I had to create a scenario, if, if it's a property that you intend to have for the rest of your life anyways, maybe not big of a deal because if you take a short term loss, if the value of homes went down, it's not like you would have sold anyways, because your plan for this home is to have it in mm. your portfolio for your entire life. So it really, I think it depends on that too. Like yeah. short, like, like it's, it's just like investing long term in the stock market. Mm -hmm. If you wouldn't have sold that until you're 65 anyways, you don't care what it's doing. Right absolutely, now. I don't care if there's a market crash right now. And if it goes, it's like, I don't think it's until 40 years anyways. So it's same, same kind of thought process there, but, uh, cool. let me read what Mario got in here real quick. Uh, my crazy AMD will come back to, to the morning open. We'll check that out here in a second. I have a position iron fly 285 shorts, 280 put by 290 call. I rolled it up from iron condor to fly. Nice. Um, yeah. Cause you're down on it. Yeah. I, yeah. Same. I, I feel you. I know I was in a couple positions before where I sold an iron condor and I ended up turning into an iron fly. And I always know if you got to go from iron condor to iron fly, you got cooked. And that was, <laughs> that was, so I get it. I get it. I get it. I hear you. I'm thinking uh, maybe Google, I take a trade call credit spread. My bad. 155 sell 160, 25 DTE. I'll check that out. Yeah. What are you saying to you? AC Trader said, um, there's a cost to refinance and interest don't always go down very fast if it does go down. Um, that makes sense. It makes sense that interest rates wouldn't just be like a dramatic percent decrease. Mm -hmm. So even if you can refinance, it probably wouldn't be a bunch. Uh, I didn't know there was a cost though. What does that cost typically look like? Um, I'm curious to what that typically looks like. So like if you wanted to refinance on a car, is it like a cash payment you have to make or does that work? Bro, that sounds like they're they're jipping you though. At that point, hmm. I don't even want to refinance if I got to pay to refinance. I mean, but I it could be worth it. Right? You just got to crunch the numbers to know you if, it's worth, it. yeah. Yeah. See if it's worth it or not. And again, depends on your your financial goals. Like like again, bro, I have some friends out here, so many properties, and I just yeah. think some of them I know they're keeping in their long term portfolio, and then some of them I know they use for short term rentals, Airbnb, whatever it is. And I'm like, yo, if this market really does have a significant correction like mm -hmm. you could take a hit good <laughs> and and one of them mentioned something like oh he would just do this do this do this and, you know if that were to be the case mm -hmm. but you know i did just keep in mind like oh that is interesting like people even have a game plan for whatever the housing market does bro it's like the stock market but way slower mm -hmm. you know obviously it's a market but it is it is interesting how that yeah it um it's a little interesting too because that's uh so is that like friends, some of your friends that are a little bit in real estate or what? Yeah, you know, um, I don't want to name drop, but you know. Oh, no, yeah, don't don't name drop. But um, no, that's just interesting. I'm curious too. like, I don't know if you talked to them about the whole um, realtors are getting kind of capped on what they can make now commission wise, and they're kind of getting gutted a little bit. Why is that? Um, so the main organization that's like responsible for uh, uh, like most what you get like registered under i think as being a real estate agent right like they are deciding to lower and kind of cap what how much commission a realtor can make on a sale um i think they're doing that to like make uh house sales cheaper because whenever you uh are buying a house you have to pay the realtor to um like for their work and it's a fat percentage of like the house right. itself yeah. Yeah. Um, but they want a certain like an, a capped percentage instead yeah, of that they can um, get yes so like if you're selling a million dollar house you'd make the same as selling like a five hundred thousand dollar house which i don't know if that's 100 percent accurate but that sounds wait awesome. i see the gist i see the concept though yeah you see what i'm saying that I really out about it and it, it seems a little i don't know how i feel too much yeah. obviously I'm not i really, think that's a terrible idea i think that's horrible as well but um, that also, uh, I was talking to, like that was telling me kind of another perspective of um, sometimes some realtors do get paid, I think, a bit too much. But at the same time, their work, I think, is getting reciprocated 
like off of what they're getting paid. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you can't be a starting realtor and just sell a multi-million dollar house. You have to work your way up. So I think you're getting paid for your experience, for how good you are at your job. Yeah, so that's kind of my argument. But that did make like some good points too. So we're just talking. Yeah, that's interesting. I do mm -hmm. think that's a terrible idea, though. I thought so too. I'm sure they have the reasons. Um, we could. I'll, I'll go more in depth maybe on Wednesday. I'll post some. Some. Yeah. Stuff. I mean, just from what you're saying, I think that's a terrible idea. Like, why? Why? See, that's another thing because that's it's like if, if the root problem is you want to. What, what was the root problem? They wanted to what? pay less so you like basically yes, but why yes pay less but because I, so see my thing was i think the gov or I, it's not even the government which is crazy mm -hmm. but um for some like to me it seemed like it was helping the government out because first houses are way too expensive obviously we were just talking about that um and this just seems like they're cutting out what <clears throat> like a person would make like the citizen would make yes the but what's the reason is what i'm saying of what like why like, it's getting that, cut yes you said it i just can't remember what you said you oh. said because of home prices or something I yeah home prices are just too, like too high so that's okay like, so mm -hmm. i was gonna say if that's the reasoning for it it's crazy they're attacking the middle class right? say it again sorry oh yeah no go okay. ahead no, no, no. no i was just gonna say it's crazy that if that is the reason mm -hmm. this is how it always works with the government too they cause the issues at the top now home prices are too overvalued. so now you got to mess with people down here Bro, because of your mess ups. That's home prices should never be out of control anyway. I mean, I was like, I think it's even though this, like where this uh, built, like new thing is coming from, it's not coming from the government directly, but I was like, I think it's so weird that the government is benefiting by this when they're making this issue. And then people with jobs like citizens are getting penalized for it and they're going to get their pay reduced. And stuff. Right. So, and being a realtor isn't easy anyways. Like. You literally yeah. if you're not selling you're not making money so mm -hmm. you know it's one of those things to where it's one of those things that i i i, I really love commission-based jobs for people Bro. that are really hard workers because if you're willing to put in the work i think you should be able Bro. to we think that. exact yeah. same because i was i was telling dad about that and i was getting dad hyped that used to be commission-based too exactly yeah. yeah so um i think i was literally telling dad i was like i think commission-based jobs are the best jobs for like immigrants or like hard workers <laughs> because they work so hard so you get like you reciprocate or yeah. get reciprocated off of like what you're right. doing. So I've always loved those type of jobs. So yeah, and and bro, being a realtor is not easy. So like most and realtors getting, aren't even making money like that, anyways. Mm -hmm. Most like yes, like so if you do that, like most like especially because social media will show some realtors this and that. Social media just warps the perception on what reality is for the average individual. Yeah, and the average realtor is not pulling it in like that. So I don't think there should be more stipulations around how much they can make, what they can make. It's a difficult job, anyways. Yeah, and it's something that takes a lot of time to develop and grow a portfolio and gain clients, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. But anyways, um, Tasty Chair said the cost can be several k to refinance. It can take two or more years to break even on the refinance okay see that makes sense hmm. or to your point like see, um, and, and then again it depends on your financial goals you'd have to crunch those numbers okay it would take me two years to make this back mm -hmm. i want to sell this in the next five to ten that might make sense oh uh, wait this is a property i want to sell in five years it's gonna yeah. take me three years to make but okay that i would make those are my margins that wouldn't make too much sense so it's so based off it of is, yeah it's a situation by situation situation basically. by situation for sure thank you taste trader for clarifying that for me appreciate it yeah, because I don't own a home, so yeah, well, for real. This is this is stuff I need to know for the future. Yeah. So I appreciate yeah, yeah. it. Now I'm just checking out Nasdaq at the same time, seeing what's going on. Mark has been pretty much dead and slow ever since like 10 15 this morning. Pretty much nothing else going on. So I go from like right here. We haven't really been doing nothing all day. I mean that is boring. So um nothing really going on in the market too much today we're kind of just consolidating mm -hmm. um i'm really hoping we get some type of sell-off whenever that comes but maybe we get that soon um 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 interest rates no so and i know the last conversations around interest rates was like they were talking about how they were going to be able to cut interest rates like seven times into 2024 now mm -hmm. we're talking about through only three times who knows if they're ever even going to cut maybe they come out soon talking about we can only cut we're projecting cutting interest rates two times and then before you know it they're projecting cutting interest rates one zero Nick, before you know it they raise it 
Yeah. Bro, I think if they raise interest rates, the market. That's... There's no way they do though, right? Bro. After the run they yeah. had. Freeze. Yeah, but CPI just came in hotter than expected. True. Inflation just came in hotter than expected. And we talked about how, inf how inflation, how raising interest rates tames inflation. Mm -hmm. And inflation is still running rampant. And the data just came out over expect over expected. Yeah. And they haven't even, and, and there's already been conversations about reducing the amount of times they're going to have to uh, cut interest rates. Bro, if inflation persists, I don't think they have a choice. Which is crazy right. because asset prices are at all time highs. Yeah. Um, for way longer than they should have been too. So what's yeah, going on, REA? Hello, brother, 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 brother. Brother. Doing well, doing well. Um, you missed today's session. We talked a lot about interest rates. Um, future outlook on interest rates. Checked out the market. Uh, market's not doing too much today. Um, checked out Google, McDonald's. I'm not gonna lie, it's a, it's a pretty boring day. I'm gonna just keep it a buck. Yeah. It's a pretty boring day. Can am I allowed to say that? It's a boring day in the market. Yes, this is but a safe space. It's a safe space. It's a boring day in the market. Um, but that's pretty much it. Hello, brother. Bro, do you know who Sketch is, first of all? Sketch? Mm hmm Have you heard of? No. Oh, okay. Never mind. This is it's not relevant then. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he's funny. Very funny. I digress. I digress. I digress. I digress. Um do you look at interesting crypto projects? I know we have some crypto streams coming up soon, so make sure you uh, pay attention to those. I know I'll talk with Wachiku sometimes about crypto. That stream is on Friday. Um, <clears throat> uh, we talked about some projects, but I actually can't even re remember them off the top of my head what projects mm -hmm. those were, but let's make it an awesome day. Yes, sir. It's a good day to have a good day. It is a good day. It's a good no, day to have a good day. It's a little gloomy over here, but it's a good, it's a good day. Yeah, no, it's a good day. It's a good day. Um, but no, I, I know like Vaughn, Thomas, uh, you know, Wachuka, those guys, they'll, they'll, they'll definitely get into crypto talking about more projects that's going on. Uh, crypto is something that I really can't wait to start getting into a little bit more. Like <clears throat> the risk to reward is massive in certain crypto projects. Like, mm -hmm. like I want to just be able to just put like <clears throat> a thousand, a couple thousand in this project, thousand, couple thousand in this project, thousand, couple thousand in this project, thousand, couple thousand. And I know even if 80% of the projects that I put in that portfolio fail, mm -hmm. if one of them take off, it could pay off. You know, the risk reward is crazy. Mad. The risk reward will be massive if we just yeah. one of them. So that's kind of something I want to do and get into higher risk, but I think it'd be worth it. And um, the, the the multiples that you can return on some of those, I think is pretty fire. Mm -hmm. um, Look at Gari Network Web3 big project. Yeah, um, Thomas and Vaughn were actually looking at that the other day. Um, I'm sure they're going to be pulling it up again. It's been pretty, pretty relevant lately. So, um, yeah, they're all about crypto. So I definitely recommend. Them to them yeah. Up. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, other than that, I'm gonna just check out see what where Bitcoin is actually sitting right now. Yeah. Seventy one thousand. So it's near its all time highs again. I really wanted crypto. I don't know why crypto is up so much today. Actually. <laughs> Four hours it's up like six six seven thousand it's all-time highs is sitting at 72 and a half or 70 a little above seventy five thousand. and right now it's sitting at almost seventy two thousand. so mm -hmm. i don't know i have a weird feeling i know i'm not short crypto right now too so my opinion is not valid because i personally think if you ain't got money where your mouth is your position is your opinion is invalid <laughs> but anyways no i do i definitely do look at crypto i do like a crypto i'm going to start looking at crypto a little bit more too but um, I just have a feeling, I don't know, if we do get a big, a big sell off in crypto, I would definitely be personally, I'm probably gonna be interested and start maybe dabbling and putting a couple dollars in Ethereum and Bitcoin and, and stuff a couple like that. Bucks. If it does sell off, because so many more people are loading up on crypto right now. If it were to break its lows around 60,000 and sweep down there, mm. I'd probably look to get long. I'd be comfortable doing that. But until then, I'm gonna wait. But that's gonna be it for me today. Anything you want to add, T, before we head out of here? No, that'll be pretty much it. Like you said, today's an awesome day. Hope y'all have a great rest of the day. We have other streams coming up that you guys can check out as well. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, this past hour, we'll see what we get. It's Monday. Don't force any trades. Um, 
CLSK and Bitcoin kind of look similar. Look at Gari Network. It's a great price right now. It's time to load into it. It has 200 million users. I'll definitely check it out. Gari. I'll write it down right now. Gari. I'll check out the Gari Network. That cool, cool. All right. Um, thanks for hanging out with us. Mario, big deal donuts. Everybody, it will catch you guys next time. Peace. Peace.